In terms of identifying salt affected soil, some of the general characteristics are this. So first of all, this is a global problem. It occurs on about six to eight percent of the cropland worldwide. So it, it's actually millions of acres. It oftentimes occurs in areas with low rainfall and high evapotranspiration. And so these are areas that are typically not Ohio. These are areas that are arid and semi-arid. So we're talking about Western United States or say Western China or in desert ecosystems. Um, okay. And so what we typically find in general is the accumulation of salts like you see at least in the picture on the very top here all right this is accumulation of salts sometimes you can actually see uh, some of the salt crystals and sometimes you just see an area that looks sort of dead and maybe the soil color looks a little bit different right and all these types of salts in this field in the top picture and the salts that are present in the bottom picture are actually likely different in terms of the actual salt or salts that are present. The salts that we often find are associated with sodium, calcium, magnesium, and potassium. And the counter ion is often chloride or sulfate. But sometimes the counter ion or the anion can be carbonate or can be bicarbonate. And when we think about salts, oftentimes, Many of you, just like myself, we think about sodium. And when sodium is the salt that is affecting the soil, sodium can be toxic to plants, just like toxicity. And we may have talked about this earlier in the semester, where if an element is toxic or in toxic concentrations in the soil, it will kill the apical meristem of the growing tip of the root. And the other negative aspect about excess sodium in soils is it destroys soil structure. And I'm sure we'll come back to this again in this unit. But what sodium does is, first of all, it is a plus one ion or cation. So it is attracted to CEC sites. The issue with sodium is that it has a very large hydrated radius. It is surrounded by six waters. And so when it gets in between soil particles, specifically clays, it is a huge ion and it pushes clays apart. And when it pushes clays apart, the soil disperses. And so what that means is the soil loses aggregation and pore space is closed up because clays are being pushed apart. And so there's a reduction in aeration, a reduction in infiltration, and a reduction of percolation of water and air. Some of the sources of salt in soils, there are natural sources, so simply the weathering of rocks and parent materials. Now, you would find this in very arid conditions, right? Certainly not in Ohio. If you have a high water table with high evaporation, you might see salts building up on the soil surface. If the water table is close enough to the soil surface where capillary rise can, can bring water through capillary rise from the water table to the soil surface, and when that water evaporates, it can leave salts that are present in the water behind. Of course, if you're near a, a sea or an ocean or brackish water, saltwater spray or seawater intrusion into areas that have not seen seawater in, uh, being intrused for whatever reason. Uh, this actually happens down in Louisiana, for example, where uh, brackish water is moving up the Mississippi River. We tend to see salts accumulating in our soils. Classic example is poor quality irrigation water or poor water management or both. And this is in areas where we irrigate often with potentially poor quality water to begin with. Maybe we're pulling water from a groundwater source that is simply running through some geologic material that used to be uh, an ocean, for example, ocean bed, for example, or in arid and semi-arid areas when irrigation occurs and water flows either off a field 
laterally or flows down through the soil profile and carries salts with it. That water ends up in another water body where that water is likely used for irrigation again and again and again. And when this occurs, salts build up in the water. If we have excessive applications of fertilizers, manures, compost, et cetera, any material that contains excess salts and those salts are not leached out of the soil, we can have an issue with salt accumulation in the soil. And of course, a classic example across the, the nation actually, and maybe even the world is de-icing or dust suppression of roadways. And so the, the liquid that we use, or you might use a solid salt. I know I've seen a lot of solid salt application on roads here in uh, Ohio, but it could be in liquid form too, in terms of de-icing. You just simply take the salt that is in solid form and it's, you dissolve it in water and then spray the water across a road surface. Where does that salt end up? It ends up either in uh, a median or it ends up back in a water body. And perhaps that water body may be used for irrigation purposes. This is certainly the case in arid and semi-arid areas. So now that you have an idea of how salts build up, what are the visual symptoms? And usually they're pretty straightforward, okay? And so we typically see areas that have a, either a white precipitate or I'll share, I'll share with you another picture on the next screen where the soil just looks different than the surrounding area in terms of it may look darker in color on the soil surface, believe it or not, as compared to the surrounding area. And sometimes we see large cracks or polygons that form in a soil, just like you see in the bottom right hand corner of this picture uh, on this slide. So this is taken, this is obviously not <laughs> Ohio, this is Wyoming, and this is a low-lying area where water has accumulated and evaporated and left salts behind. So water has run off of areas across this landscape and accumulated in this, in this area. The Dead Sea is a classic example of salt accumulation. The Dead Sea has quite a bit of salt in it, and actually salt from probably salt spray has accumulated, accumulated on this rock and then has over time, due to evaporative losses, left the salt behind, and that's what you see. And like I said, sometimes you see some relatively strange shapes, maybe polygon type shapes. And if you see any salt crystals in the area, this is probably a salt affected soil. Oh, and I, I promised you I was gonna share with you a picture. Let me go back to, so I want to also talk about this picture on the bottom right hand corner. And I briefly mentioned this before, but in this area, this is a salt affected area in a field where this is likely a low lying area. Um, I don't think this field was irrigated. Sure doesn't look like it's been irrigated. This is this is from somewhere in an arid to semi arid or probably semi arid area. And this is not sodium chloride affected. This is just general salts or salinity. And oftentimes when you see soils like this, the color on the soil surface is darker than the surrounding areas, which you can't see, but it's darker in color because um, sometimes high salt concentrations will cause organic matter to disperse. And so you see a darker color, a darkening of the soil surface. Let's let's um, let's stop there, and we'll pick up in the next video with irrigation water and salts.